Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Michael for Spirit Comics. Welcome to my comic book review of Green Lanterns number 50. You might ask, why am I starting at 50? Well, the short reason and the simple reason is because I didn't do the first, uh, you know, the what all of them before it. And uh, I, I, I do welcome you to my channel. And for those who are new to my channel, Spirit Comics, please do subscribe and also, you know, smash that bell like She-Hulk, so you'll be notified each time a new video is uploaded. And if you enjoy this comic book review, you know, like it and share it with others so they can enjoy it as well. And you know, don't forget to comment. You know, the the other reason I'm starting with Green Lanterns number 50 is because this ha is one of my favorite DC titles. And this particular title, Green Lanterns, has struggled in the past few months with a writer that I don't think did such a great job with the characters. But now, starting with issue 50, Green Lanterns has the, has who I would consider to be the premier writer for DC Comics on this title. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's Dan Jurgens, the very man who wrote the previous run of Action Comics that led up to issue 1000 and if you remember action his run on action comics Dan Jorgens brought a sense of family to that title but he also brought a sense of mystery you know and the the Superman title that was also running at the time by you know uh, Peter J T Peter J Tomasi that had a sense of family but Action Comics by Dan Jurgens had a sense of family at times but also a sense of mystery that went along with the action and while there is no family to speak of in Green Lanterns because you have Jessica Cruz, Simon Baz, and uh, you know the the other Green Lanterns, they're you know the uh, the entire the the Green Lantern core is in here, and so it's made they and that core is made up of you know people uh, from different planets, different unit uh, sectors in the universe. So you could say in a way that the Green Lantern Corps is a type of family, but they are not, or they have not been portrayed that way since uh, DC Comics relaunched their line in 2016 with the Rebirth Initiative. But, like I said, Dan Jorgens brings his sense of mystery to this title. This new arc is titled Evil's Might. This is part one. It lurks within the power battery. And we, the, the issue starts off with uh, one of the guardians meditating. I don't remember which one this is. But uh, he's meditating and thinking... And he just he find and he senses an anomaly, and he thinks it's him. But who is the him? Well, that's something I was asking too. So now we go over a page, and there's the John Stewart. He's in sector zero eight one one. 
He's out on a scouting mission of some sort, and he comes to this barren, the, this uh, barren ship that looks like it's been, you know, torn to pieces. Now something starts, something is starts here that's very interesting, so, and you know we're, we the reader are not given the clues to this, but. Uh, the ring is what everything the ring says is here in these little light green uh, bu bubbles with the with the dark green lettering and uh, John Stewart says ring ETA the source of the distress signal and, uh, and the ring says no need to ask lantern Stewart we have arrived. Analysis, Stuart says. Plant of origin unknown. Species of, of crew unknown. He says, okay, go with what we do know. And then the ring tells him that the ship's fuel cell and heavy weapons are drained. And there's been some sort of plasma blast, you know, a really big one that breached the hull of the ship. And killed all that were on board. And then it happens again. Boom! And then the John, John Stewart says, Erasing the crime scene, glad I powered up before I left. And then the ring says, Reading energy signature of the plasma blast and cross referencing with data files. 96.2 two percent match located if correct this threat should be quite manageable which is not true because that derelict ship was not that derelict ship was not alone because look at all these other ships that are coming into, into picture here and then uh, Stuart says, since when are a few thousand destroyers manageable? And uh, the ring says, either this species is not the one I suspected, or they have forged a considerable upgrade. Stuart says, haven't given me anything I can, haven't given me anything I can't handle so far. Starfighters, so he handles those and then this person sneaks up on John Stewart and says you are not of the us and so this weird guy comes up and I don't know who he is because I don't think this builds on the pre previous two issues and he says not of the effort not of the direction this is bigger than we thought, John Stewart says. Not of the destination. He says, alert the guardians. And then the ring sends this out. Lantern Stewart's report. Threat resolved. Status secure. Which is a total lie of what John Stewart just said. So this sets up the first part of the mystery. Why did his ring, which he's wearing on his hand right there, disobey his command? And then we go back over to uh, Space Sector 2814, which is the where a Lantern's a uh, Guy Gardner and Kilowog are. They're talking with uh, this old person who I think I've seen in the, the in Green Lantern's title maybe a year ago or so I can't remember I've, I've seen this face before but I just cannot remember where and these two are there to help but this you know lady as Guy Gardner puts it is not giving them much to go on, you know, you know, not letting them do their job. 
Because she says, you are Green Lanterns, are you not? When threats loom on the horizon, are you not tasked with forming a defense? And Gardner says, damn right, so point us to the bad guys and we'll take care of them. And then she says, that level of specificity is unknown to me. I can only know that I sense a great and disturbing anomaly. Huh? A result, perhaps, of the source wall being pierced. Or as I fear, something far worse. Which is the fault of Scott Snyder, who wrote that horrible ending to Dark Knight's Metal. And I love this. Guy Gardner says, if there's anything I hate, it's mystic mumbo-jumbo that paints the sky as being an in imminent danger of falling without proof to back it up and Kilwog agrees with Gardner and then someone comes up and says behind him says you know they've encountered the th a threat and then they fall down you know because you know, this, this person is seriously beat up I mean beyond healing And says, for the situation is beyond dire. When that would not be accurate. And then just, boom, dead. Almost, almost dead. Gardner says, what happens? Who did this to you? Rav and their age and kill all guesses ravagers and so then they get a message from their ring guardians request that you assist them in location in locating the lantern Stuart now unaccounted for which is the truth he's unaccounted for meanwhile back on earth the Wonderful and be and beautiful Jessica Cruz is out partying with her sister. She's one of the superheroes in the DC universe that I really do admire. I really look I mean because she's was written really well. And Kyle Rayner shows up. And basically says, you know, it, that uh, being a Green Lantern is something that means you have to be ready at any moment's notice to go. And so that all three of them power up their batteries, I mean, just power up their rings by saying the oath. And, what, uh, and then they're off in, I think, racing toward a uh, Mogo, and here's the horrible advert for Superman 1. And then back on Mogo, here's the Guardians talking. And this uh, comic book looks like it's coming apart a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, you know, the Guardians, one of them sense that something's wrong, and the other one doesn't. So they're, they're, in, they're in disagreement. And... Then they, they, they're starting to figure out that something's not right because Jordan hasn't responded. and But they know that Rain, Rainer is on the move. Back here's Stuart, you know, fighting this manageable, finger quotes, situation, which is not manageable for one person. And he says, you sent the wrong message. You were supposed to send the alert and call for reinforcements. And the ring says, a misunderstanding. And yet, that's just strange. Why would the ring do that? I suspect, I mean, I, I, I don't know who this guy is. But I can tell you who he reminds me of. 
He reminds me of the character Volthoom, who was like I think who was the who was the one that had that had the I think one of the first rings. I mean, Jessica Cruz got his ring, and. You know, it's, but I, maybe my memory is a little bit off, but I thought Volthoom was either, you know, killed or he was put into a, a, you know, a prison somewhere or in the past. And I like this. And that character says, and, and must be removed. Stuart says, this is where you pour it on. Figure you can break my will. My shield. And he says, fat freaking chance. And, you know, he makes a construct of armor. But this dude, you know, he tears it apart. I don't know why. And then... Even down here, you know, Dan Jurgens gives gives us more mystery. Stewart says, "The alert, send it." And the ring says, "No." The ring defied John Stewart. And so now there's even more strange stuff going on. Now, earlier we saw the Guardians back on Mogo, the pl the sentient planet, and nothing was strange was happening. But, Kyle Rayner, Jessica Cruz, and Simon Baz arrive, and the place is under a is having a torrential downpour. And, they think it's nothing they can't handle. But then they hear this, something like a cra uh, a crash, because they've been speculating about you know the reason for this rain here on Mogo since there's never rain before and Mogo is a sentient being. This is one of the buildings on Mogo. It's starting to fall. So Rainer goes up and start starts off and. Simon Baz goes ahead of him. And Rainer says, The storm is a full bore hurricane, Baz. So this is a serious storm here. Finally, Guardians evacuate them and anyone else in the higher levels. He says, On it. Then it starts up with Jessica Cruz. You know, her ring. Because she holds up her ring and asks, Has an evacuation ever been necessary before? And this is what her ring says to her. Your priority is yourself, Jessica. Huh? I mean, that's what Jessica's thinking because she says, How can you say that? And the ring says, The situation is not as it seems. Guard your trust carefully. So already, Dan Jorgens has sh has showing us once again that he knows how to write a good mystery. You know, there's sowing seeds of the, the ring is sowing seeds of distrust. And there's Guy Gardner and Kilowog who find John Stewart. And he is pretty beaten up. I mean, you know, really bad. So they get him and go back to Mo and they're they're heading back to Mogo. And so the Green Lanterns there on Mogo are trying to contain the situation. And uh let's see. This Green Lantern says Easier to stop weapons than natural events. And then Rainer says, I'm starting to wonder if this, meaning the storm, 
is truly a natural event. If so, you'd almost think Mogo himself could get control of it. Which is a good point. Yeah, it's a valid point. And... No, I don't know. Rainer says there may be more to us than we're seeing. But they, they, they have to keep the bu these buildings from falling because there's another one. It's coming down because this storm is doing a doing a doozy. And I think that's uh, Rainer right there. He says if that falls, it'll take more buildings down like dominoes. And Jessica Cruz is on it. So she goes up, she's going to clear the next tower. And she notices that the power is out. And her ring says that there are two life forms, but correction, there's one. And there's Baz, who's trying to He's try, trying to hit. No, that no, no, no. That no, that's not bad. That's Rainer. He's trying to get the building set back up, and he says once I'm finished, then he's going to join her. And Jessica realizes just one. Are you saying? The ring says we lost one of our own. My God, she's shocked. And here's Simon Baz holding a guardian. And if you look at this, there's something sticking right up through his chest. And Baz says that he got there late. And the exp the explosion, you know, and everything else took to you know caused. Him to, to arrive there late and says that the guardian is dead. And the ring, who's been sowing the seeds of distrust into Jessica Cruz, says that the scan suggests otherwise that this guardian, Carasau, was murdered and that she cannot trust Simon Baz or anyone else for that matter. So that is the that is Green Lanterns number fifty written by Dan Jurgens. It was an excellent story. You know the pacing was really good. You know, it wasn't slow. The art in itself was excellent. And Dan Jurgens gives us a really interesting mystery and a reveal at the end, you know, someone has been murdered, a guardian. But who did it? That's the that's the question we're left left with at the end of Green Lanterns number fifty. So I'll be reviewing uh, the next two issues so you can see what how the mystery will unfold I'm Michael for Spirit Comics thank you for stopping by my channel if you're new please do subscribe and smash that notification bell like She-Hulk so you don't miss any new uploads also please do like and share this comic book this comic book review with others so they can enjoy it as well and don't forget to leave your comments down below I thank you again for stopping by and till next time true readers